over the last few years, our next section, section 31, has been revised and changed quite a bit. This section is only for level 2 students, but it is an extremely popular section and important section. So what we're going to be looking at here is we are going to be looking at international transactions which are not at arm's length. Okay, so basically what I want you to understand what we've got is section 31 is an anti-avoidance section again. So a section that stops you from avoiding tax. And it seeks to penalize connected persons from manipulating international transactions to minimize their tax liabilities. So for example, A Limited and B Limited are connected. A Limited is a South African resident and B Limited is a resident of the Cayman Islands where there is no tax. So there's no tax in the Cayman Islands. A Limited and B Limited may manipulate transactions so they can use the Cayman Islands tax-free environment. So how would they do it? So let's say, for example, there's trading stock. Right? And the cost is a million rands for this trading stock. And the market value for this trading stock is 3 million rands. Okay, so what I want you to understand what can happen is this company will now claim Section 11A, sure, when they purchase the stock. But now what they can do is they can go and they can say, all right, what I think we should, what we should do is we should take this stock and we should sell it, but let's sell it for 1.1 million rands to our company in the Cayman Islands. Now, sure enough, from what we've studied so far, there are sections in the Act that can manip stop this from happening, like Section 22A, but I want you to just ignore that for now. That's the principle that is important. So they sell it for 1.1 million rands. So they've got a cap taxable income of 100,000 rands, and tax is paid on that at 28%. What then happens is the Cayman Islands, they purchase the stock, right? And for now, I'm just assuming they've got the same rules here, right? So they'll spend 1.1 million rands, and they will then sell it for 3 million rands. Now, assume just the following. Assume that there's a customer in South Africa called Mr. A that wanted to buy the stock. So this company in South Africa sells it to the Cayman Islands so that the Cayman Islands can sell it to Mr. A. And why would they want to do that? Because then we've got a tax or income over here of, well, 1.9 million rands, but that 1.9 million rands has no tax on it. So what is the effect here? The total amount of tax is 100,000 rands. If this first company had sold it for 3 million as it should. Then the taxable income would have been 2 million and the tax on that would have been 560,000 rands. Okay, so see the difference? They manipulated the tax instead of paying them 100,000, they owe uh, 560,000 and he paid 100,000 rands. So this is just one way in which people can manipulate it. It doesn't really matter so much the, the rules there uh, or the, the specific situation here. What I want you to just understand is that they should have sold it for 3 million rands, but they sold it for 1.1 million rands. So what does Section 31 do? Section 31 says, all right, this applies when connected persons and there's not an arm's length transaction. So what will happen? The following will happen. They will calculate the transaction as it is at arm's length then, and there will be a penalty. And this penalty will be either dividends tax or donations tax, which would not usually exist if it had been at arm's length. So let's see what this applies to. So an affected transaction means any transaction, right, which has been directly or indirectly entered into for the benefit of either or both. So I want you to see one or both parties must benefit. So if no one benefits from this with tax, then there's no issue. But it doesn't have to be both. So this is between a person that is a resident and a person that is not a resident. This is between a person that is not a resident and a person that has a permanent establishment in the republic. Remember that's treated almost as a resident. Or a person that is a resident and a person that has a permanent establishment outside of the republic. Or a person that is not a resident and a controlled foreign company. Now, you don't have to worry too much about the controlled foreign company. It's out of your syllabus. So basically what I just want you to see the whole time 
is that there's a resident, right? So everything in green is resident. And everything in this dark blue, the blue and yellow over there is not resident. So it's between a resident and a non-resident. And they must be connected persons in relation to other. And so there's any transactions between these people who are connected and important thing, the terms or conditions are different from what, what would have existed if they had been dealing at arm's length. So if you are not doing at arm's length, this section will kick in. Now, basically what I want you to understand what happens is that there's two things that happen. There's a primary adjustment in section 31.2 and a secondary adjustment in section 31.3. The, th the primary adjustment says, okay, what we'll do is we'll treat a transaction as if it had been concluded at arm's length. So that previous example I just quickly used where I said to you the it was the market value is three million, but they sold it. Let me just bring it up a little bit here, but they sold it for 1.1 million rands. They will then say the section 31 2 adjustment is the 3 million rands minus the 1.1 million rands. So they will add 1.9 million rands to this deal or to this transaction so that the total is still 3 million rands. So that's what I want you to see is they will fix it first. And then section 313 says that difference, so the amount by which you were short, that 1.9 million rands, my example now, that 1.9 million rands, you will be penalized on that 1.9 million rands in the following way. It will either be treated as if it's a dividend in specie or a donation made. Now, why is that important? Because if it's a dividend in specie, there is dividend tax on the amount. And who pays the dividend tax? The company. And if there's a donation, there is donations tax on the amount. So let's see what they say. So here's the section 31.2, the primary adjustment. It says, where any transaction, operation scheme agreement understanding constitutes an affected transaction. Now remember guys, what is an affected transaction? Is that what we saw already in section 31.3, where it's between a resident and a non-resident, and it's not at arm's length. So if it's not at arm's length, right, and any term or condition of that transaction, Results or will result in a tax benefit by a person that is a party to that transaction. The taxable income of any person contemplated in that paragraph, so this paragraph, that derives the tax benefit must be calculated as if that transaction understanding operation scheme had been entered into in, in conditions, in terms of conditions that would have existed if it had been at arm's length. So they say adjust it so that it is at arm's length. Section 313, this is the secondary adjustment. This is now the penalty. So it says, if there's a difference between any amount that was applied in the calculation of taxable income and any amount that would have been applied in paragraph A. So they're basically saying if there's a difference between market-related value and not market-related value. The amount of that difference if that person is a resident, the other person is a person contemplated um, in paragraph A, R, B, B, A, 3, B, B of the definition of the, of the transaction. Right, so basically that difference must be treated as, if that resident is a company, it is a dividend, and if that resident is a person other than that company, it is deemed to be a, a donation. And this dividend or donation is deemed to have been made on the last day of the period six months following the end of the year of assessment. So basically what they're trying to say, is it will be treated as if it happens six months after year eight. Then there's all sorts of information here, and that you can ignore. So in summary, if the resident is a company, you will treat it as if it's a dividend, so you'll calculate dividends tax on the difference, and if the resident is not a company, it will be treated as a donation, so you'll calculate donations tax on it. Again, guys, you will also still have all of your normal donations tax rules, 
So you will still have that 100,000 rands annual exclusion, for example. So I want you to make sure that you see if it's a resident company, it's a dividend. And if it's not a company like a natural person, it's considered to be a donation. Now, in an exam situation, I'm going to make this the comment here for you. Right, here we go. This is actually what I want you to see. They will tell you in an exam situation, what are the arm's length terms and conditions. So I can't even give you complete examples because any transaction in the world which they can manipulate, they can throw in here. They will just tell you in an exam, what is the arm's length conditions.